So you're playing chess. Everything's going well. You win your first game convincingly as white with a laser accurate 200 average centipoint loss. You're on top of the world. So you accept the seething rematch offer, ready to bust out the Sicilian, or perhaps even enter the complex theoretical terrain of King E2. But then your worst fears are realized. D4 is on the board. Solid, strategic, boring D4. Stay calm. If you've ever had the misfortune of finding yourself in this situation, I'm going to teach you how to counter this abomination with one of the most effective openings for black of all time. In the next five minutes, you're going to learn how to use the Dutch defense to create high pressure, asymmetrical positions against d4 that will leave your opponents feeling positively violated. Let's get started. The Dutch starts with d4 and then f5, which controls the center, prevents white from playing e4, and immediately takes anyone in your league out of theory. From here, the overwhelmingly most common approach for white is to play g3, knight f3, bishop g2, and c4. This can happen in a variety of orders, but it's always the same thing. Why is it always the same thing? I, it just is. When this happens, play knight f6, fianchetto, and castle, and you will arrive at this position 99% of the time. White has pawns in the center, you have pawns on the king's side. I sure hope you're not getting lost already. So what do you do from here? The plan is to go for d6 and then e5, pushing pawns like this to break open the king's side, and take advantage of your active rook and superior space to make things as uncomfortable as a prostate exam on a roller coaster. Now, shockingly, white will not always let you do this. After d6, white plays knight c3. If you play e5, we lose the pawn so we need to prepare it. Queen e8 looks good, but then they just play d5, and if you ignore it and do it anyway, this happens. Queen e8 is playable if you can resist e5, but you can barely resist day drinking, so I wouldn't push it. Instead, play c6, and we have arrived at the critical position. It's easy to reach this as black, but unfortunately, this is where the autopilot stops. White has five options. b3, d5, bishop g5, rook e1, and queen c2. If they play d5, you can push the pawn right away, and after on passant, you can recapture with the bishop without worrying about this diagonal anymore. Develop your knight to a6. White finishes their development, and now you have several options. You can centralize your knight. You can play queen e7 and bring your rooks to more aggressive squares. You can go for this hyper-aggressive king maneuver, whatever you want really. Your pawn structure is very solid, your king side pawns are aggressively placed, and there are dynamic possibilities for both parties go crazy. If they play b3 instead, support the central e5 push with queen e7. There's a very good chance they'll just let you do it for free like this, which is very generous. If this happens, your goal is to play f4 and break open the king side. For example, e5, pawn takes, pawn takes, e4, and then f4. From here, the game is sharp. You can even sacrifice pawns like this. You might not win, but at least it's not going to be a fucking draw. Your opponent can prevent this by playing bishop a3 instead. When this happens, support the push even more, and then play for the same plan like this. Sometimes they will try to confuse you with bishop g5, which is a very convenient way to identify that your opponent has no idea what they are doing. Play knight e4, and when they inevitably take your knight, recapture, and their knight is forced to retreat. If they come to d2, you win a pawn like this. If they come to e1, play d5, and you have an absolutely huge center that will provide you a fleeting, delusory sensation of being successful. If rook e1, play knight e4, and they will either trade immediately or play queen c2. If they trade immediately, you will get the same insane center as before, like this. If they play queen c2, trade knights anyway, and then go for the same e5 plan as before. Use these pawns in combination with your rooks and queen to poke for weaknesses. Bring your queen side nine into the game. Don't sacrifice a rook for no reason, and you're in excellent shape. The final main move after you play c6 is queen c2. When this happens, bring this useless knight to a6. They will play a3 to prevent the knight from harassing their queen, and to expand on the queen side with b4. Play queen e8 to prepare e5. If they play e4, just do it anyway. You've earned it. Usually the d-pawn will be exchanged, and then all you have to do is play f4. Again, if you haven't caught on to the theme of these positions by now, don't sweat it. It just means you're qualified for more convenient parking spaces. Now if you're wondering to yourself, what if they don't do this? Don't worry. There are only two ways that the position will divert. Diversion 1, the Hopton. Sometimes they'll play bishop g5 immediately, planning to double your pawns and basically fuck everything up. Just fiend Keto and play normally. The plan for white is to open the center with knight c3 and e4. When they do, take the e-pawn and trade knights. Recapture with the pawn, and wherever the bishop retreats, play d5. And now your plan is to castle queenside. Develop your pieces on the queenside like this, castle queenside, and now you have gone from the dry, stale territory of the d4 player's dreams to a sharp, asymmetrical bonanza. Diversion 2, immediate knight c3. No biggie. Just develop like this. They'll play bishop g5 and try to double your pawns. Play d5 and recapture with the e-pawn after the trade. From here, you will castle queenside again and enjoy a sharp, tactical game. Now, you're probably not very tactical, nor very sharp, so you should watch this video as well. It will help you with the first of these two problems. And that's how you play the Dutch defense.
Subscribe to the channel for more chess videos. Like the video to inflate my dangerously large ego. Start an unnecessary argument in the comments section to stimulate the algorithm. And share the video with your chess playing friends. I will see you next time.